So post-stroke epilepsy is the current leading cause of acquired epilepsy in older adults. And as the population continues to age and continues to increase, the incidence of post-stroke epilepsy will continue to increase. So it's a great, it's not only a great burden for the patients who suffer from stroke and post-stroke epilepsy, but also for the healthcare systems because it definitely increases healthcare costs. So it's important for us to be able to identify Initially, I'd be able to identify who will eventually develop post-stroke epilepsy and secondly, develop uh, therapies and pro like follow-up uh, protocols to for these uh, particular patients. The main predictor factors right now are considered to be acute symptomatic seizures. So those are seizures that occur in the first seven days after stroke. The involvement of the cortex, which is the main area where, you know, of seizures basically where they occur. And there are other factors that have been described and that have that are consistent in some studies, in not in not in, not in all. But for example, the uh, specific the uh, stroke severity, the stroke, the location of the stroke. There's some studies suggesting that the volume of the stroke could also be a risk factor. The use of anti-seizure medication in the early stages of stroke has contradictory. Uh, evidence and it's not uh, recommended to continue uh, anti seizure medication therapy for a long term in chronic terms. Um, so, those are the main factors. So, location, presence of uh, acute symptomatic seizures, the severity of the stroke, and some other factors that have been described in, in smaller uh, data sets. So, those have been, there have been a couple of studies, recent uh, studies analyzing the use of EEG and neuroimaging in these settings. Unfortunately, in terms of neuroimaging, to analyze or to obtain a biomarker with robust evidence is a little bit complicated given the complexity of the imaging and the amount of data that you need to process. However, there are some studies showing that, again, cortical involvement is definitely one of the main causes. Um, some studies have been trying to analyze if there are spe specific brain regions associated with the re with an increased risk of post-stroke seizures. There's some studies suggesting that posterior stroke or a stroke involving the anterior circulation or the MCA could increase the risk of post-stroke epilepsy, but more studies are needed. Moreover, in terms of the EEG, uh, Again, there's some studies that have shown that early there are early EEG biomarkers that could predict or could help you predict those patients that will likely suffer from post-stroke um, seizures. However, most of these studies have been retrospective in nature, and therefore they're probably biased or could be biased by selection by selection bias in a way that those with higher risk like clinical risk of developing post-stroke seizures will likely be connected to the EEG and therefore the predictors of the EEG will be will be overfitted or overestimate the risk. Um, there have been some independent studies uh, showing that EEG biomarkers in the earliest stages of a stroke could help predict uh, are independent predictors of seizures during the first year of a stroke. And also that some um, findings in the early EEG, and by early EEG, I mean 72 hours, or some findings in that kind of EEG could help predict the occurrence of epileptiform activity during the hospital stay. So during the first days after stroke, which again could correspond or could indicate a higher risk of an eventually post-stroke epilepsy.